Thanks a lot to the organizers for the opportunity to give this talk on behalf of the Alice collaboration uh, about the first measurement of uh, Sigma C uh, zero, Sigma C plus plus states uh, production in uh, drone collision at the LAC. Okay. So um, the measurement of heavy flavor hadron production uh, in proton-proton collision, a uh, fundamental test of perturbative QCD calculations. And uh, in particular, the, the standard description in proton-proton collision for the production of heavy flavor hadrons is based on a factorization uh, approach, according to which uh, the production cross-section of a hadron uh, can be factorized in three uh, independent terms. Uh, the first one, a parton distribution functions, which describe how the partons are distributed within the colliding protons. Then we have the second term corresponding to the R scattering cross section, which is calculated uh, with the perturbative techniques. And then uh, we have the fragmentation function, which is uh, Thank you. Which uh, um, is uh, uh, which describes adronization. Somehow it uh, it quantifies the probability uh, of a chunk quark to provide a, a, a hadron of a given species with a certain momentum fraction of the original uh, of the original chunk quark. And in this approach, the fragmentation functions are assumed uh, usually universal among the collision systems and uh, energies. And usually they are constrained from, uh, from measurement done in E plus E minus and electron proton uh, uh, collisions. And uh, we experimentally, uh, the, to be sensitive to the adronization of the charm quark, we uh, try to measure the ratios of particle species, which correspond to ratios of fragmentation fractions for different, uh, for different hadrons. Now, the, these fragmentation, these, uh, sorry, these um, uh, factorization approach uh, successfully work for the description of the production of, uh, of uh, charm mesons. And uh, here on the left, you see the, the cross-section of the from D0, the, which is uh, described with the uncertainties by the von LL uh, approach. And uh, uh, if we look at, in the middle where we have the, the meson to meson ratio for the charm, for the charm flavor, uh, we see that this ratio is uh, almost slightly in transverse momentum and uh, uh, the measurement from Ellis uh, do not uh, show a significant dependence uh, in, in the collision system. In, in red, you have central lead lead and in uh, yellow, uh, semi-central lead lead and in blue, proton-proton. Uh, However, if we go on, uh, uh, we, we have this very nice result from LACB that shows that instead in the beauty sector, something was spotted uh, because if we look at the meson to meson ratio, we see that the, as in the charm sector, we have an almost flat uh, uh, behavior versus PT. However, if you look at the lambda B over B ratio, so baryon to meson ratio, we observe a clear PT dependence and in particular an enhancement at low PT of about a factor two or three or, uh, more or less with respect to the meson to meson ratio. And uh, if we go uh, back to the charm sector, we observe something uh, um, also uh, for the, for the uh, charm baryons. And here you have the measurement from Elisa of the lambda C baryon, uh, compared again with models that, uh, that uh, use this uh, factorization approach, which are not able to catch the magnitude of the cross-section. The cross-section is significantly underestimated by all the models. And uh, again, looking at the baryon to meson ratio this time on the charm sector, we can observe a significant enhancement of this, uh, of this uh, ratio with respect to what uh, uh, is seen in plus C minus. Uh, depending on the PT, we are, we are talking about a factor 2.525. And here in particular, you can see the two measurements from ELIF and, uh, and CMS. So uh, this behavior open a series of questions, uh, whether further mechanisms are playing a role and in influencing the adronization of heavy, uh, heavy quarks in hadronic collisions, whether uh, fragmentation functions cannot be considered any more universal uh, in this approach. So um, in this context, the lambda C and sigma C cover uh, a very important role because according to the conventional fragmentation uh, approach, the um, uh, lambda C and sigma C can be formed only when charm quark picks up uh, respectively a spin zero or spin one UD die quark. And, uh, and uh, since the mass of the spin one UD die quark is significantly larger with respect to the spin zero one, uh, the production of these, uh, of, of these die quark is expected to be suppressed. And as a consequence, also the sigma C production is expected to be suppressed with, the, with respect to the lambda C one. And this is what was also uh, experimentally observed 
by the Bell experiment in the uh, plus minus collision at 10 GeV, uh, where the, the sigma C production cross section is uh, uh, suppressed by a factor about three or four with respect to the excited uh, lambda C state. And uh, this is uh, somehow peculiar for the, for the charm, because if we look at the counterpart in the strange sector, we see that the hierarchy instead is, uh, is given only by the, the, the strangeness quantum number. When you said for the charm, despite the same core content, we have a hierarchy in, um, in production cross section that is not driven uh, by something similar. So uh, now this is what happens in, in, in plus E minus. But uh, what about in proton proton collision at this stage? We saw that uh, the variants are not described by, uh, by the model. So these were the questions that were, were addressed by the Alice experiment during this measurement. So, in a nutshell, Alice is a general purpose experiment composed by two main parts a central barrel here, uh, covering uh, the mid rapidity range, and uh, a muon arm at forward rapidity. And in this analysis, we use the central barrel and in particular uh, uh, the inner tracking system, which is fundamental for the vertexing, for the reconstruction of, um, of uh, 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 charm hadron secondary vertexes. I will, uh, I will spend a few words later. Uh, and the inner tracking system also helps the TPC to, in the tracking. The TPC is the, main, uh, is the main tracker of ELIS and also provides uh, a particle identification via measurement of uh, ionization energy loss. And then uh, particle identification is also provided by the time of flight detector, which uh, identifies charged particles by the measurement of the time of flight. Now, the reconstruction of our baryon. So uh, as I said, we, in ELIS, we measure the lambda C and sigma C. The reconstruction of lambda C is performed exploiting two different decay channels. Now I will give you a brief uh, uh, overview, some detail uh, of the analysis. So the first channel is the, the PK pi one. So basically a uh, candidate lambda C is uh, reconstructed as a, uh, a triplet of identified proton kion and pions. And uh, on top of this, uh, we exploit also the intrinsic displacement of the lambda C, namely uh, the fact that the lambda C has a sizable uh, C tau of around uh, 61 micron that can be resolved um, so that we can resolve the, the decay point of the lambda C called the secondary vertex from the beam interaction point called the primary vertex. And thanks to this, we can exploit some variables uh, called the topological uh, variables, such as the decay length, which is indeed the distance between these two vertices. And uh, uh, of course, for the, this is important to, separ to better separate the lambda C signal from the combinatorial background because the lambda C baryons are, in, are intrinsically displaced. Uh, and so uh, the, there is a real displacement uh, of this. And another example is the cosine of pointing angle, which is another variable um, where the, the pointing angle corresponds to the angle between the flight line of the lambda C and that of the reconstructed momentum. And for the signal, of course, they are expected to be aligned. Um, and therefore, the, for the signal, this, uh, this uh, quantity here is, um, is picked at one. Uh, the cosine of pointing angle is picked at one, modulo some smearing effect due to the resolution of our, of our reconstruction. Uh, but then another important piece of, uh, piece of information that we use to, re to, to reconstruct the lambda C in PK pi is the PAD. Uh, and in particular, we adopt a Bayesian technique for the, for the reconstruction of the lambda C. So in this approach, basically we take the, the detector signals and we express them in terms of probabilities, uh, meaning that uh, given a, a given species uh, HI, we uh, calculate the probability for this particle of species HI to produce a signal as alpha, where alpha is uh, one of our PID detectors, such as TPC and TOF. And we uh, calculate a likelihood um, expressed like this, um, for each detector alpha. And uh, the total likelihood is then, uh, the, can be expressed as the product of each likelihood for each single detector. And with the bias theorem, we retrieve the, the, uh, the so-called posterior probability that tells us instead, given a certain set of signals in our detectors, um, what is the probability that these signals are produced by a particle of a species HI. And this is the information that we, that we exploit in analysis to better separate the signal from background. Uh, of course, for the application of this method, we need uh, some priors that are fixed um, to the relative abundances of pion and protons measured in, uh, in data. 
And uh, with this technique, here just a, just a shot of what, uh, what was studied in Ellis, uh, moving from a, a standard and sigma PID to a Bayesian PID approach. Uh, we observed um, again in a background rejection of about a factor seven and a better, a larger signal to background ratio of about a factor two. Now, uh, another channel that is exploited for the reconstruction of the lambda C is uh, uh, the PK0 short one. No more a three prong channel, but uh, uh, here we have a, a proton, a particle with a, a V0 decay, the, that of the, the K0 short. And in this case, the, the, the variable exploited for the, for the reconstruction of the lambda C uh, are divided in two categories. One category for the so-called bachelor track corresponding to the proton, and another category related to the, to the decay topology of the, of the V0. And uh, in this case, the usage of machine learning techniques uh, like those decision trees uh, was, uh, was found to be, to be very useful to optimize the signal to background separation. Now, um, uh, the reconstruction of the lambda C is crucial also for the reconstruction of sigma C variance. Uh, this is because the sigma C strongly decays with 100% of branching ratio in a lambda C plus a charged pion. Being a strong decay, in this case, we don't have, we don't have um, uh, uh, displaced topology. So the, the decay point of the sigma C cannot be resolved from the secondary vertex and no topological selections on the sigma C decays can be exploited in this case. So the idea is to reconstruct the lambda C as, the, as described before and couple it with a, uh, with a charged pion and with an invariant mass technique, we, we uh, measure the signal. Uh, here you have in the plot, you have, a, you have an example. And uh, to the signal peak, uh, we have the contribution of, uh, of the uh, sigma C zero and sigma C plus signals that are, um, and, and this is uh, taken into account in the, in the fitting routine. Now uh, with this, uh, we can then measure the, the, the production yield uh, from data and uh, the, the, they are used to, to retrieve the production cross section, uh, modulo some corrections that are necessary um, uh, and also some normalization. So apart from the formalization factors reported here, we have two correction factors. Of course, uh, we have uh, some efficiency that must be evaluated, that, ev that are evaluated by Monte Carlo simulations and these um, are related to the fact that the, the selections and the um, uh, uh, reconstruction techniques, of course, have some inefficiencies and, and we, must, uh, we must correct for them. And then we have another correction factor called uh, a prompt uh, corresponding to the fraction of uh, uh, prompt variance out of all reconstructed, where for prompt variance, we mean variance coming from directly produced from the primary vertex or from the decay of a, a higher mass uh, charm uh, state, exactly charm states that decay in these, uh, in these uh, ground state ones. And uh, thanks to this, we can then measure the, the production cross section of several hadrons. Here in this plot, you have in black the, the D0 meson one in PP at 13 TV that is not uh, treated in detail in this presentation. And then we have the lambda C in blue and the sigma C zero plus plus in uh, in red, and for the for the lambda c and sigma c, the results correspond to the to the average between uh, the results in the two decay channel that I discussed before, pk pi and pk zero short. And thanks to the measurement of the cross section, we can then go and uh, and have a look at the um, and the uh, particle ratios. So uh, in the left plot, you have the lambda C over D0 ratio, and on the right plot, you have the sigma C over D0 ratio, which are compared with different model calculations that I will mention quickly later. But first of all, just to, uh, to point you this out, you can see that the, the results um, are significantly higher to what expected in plus and minus collisions, which can be taken as reference, the, the, the light blue curves. Um, and uh, in particular, you can see that in relative terms, the sigma C over D0 shows um, a higher uh, enhancement with respect to lambda, uh, lambda C over D0. Notice the, uh, this factor 10 that we put in the, in the theoretical band to make it uh, more visible. But uh, the measurement uh, uh, within uncertainties are described by several predictions. One of them comes from, uh, from PK8 where some uh, color reconnection beyond linking color approximation uh, uh, is, uh, is introduced. And in particular uh, here, the, 
the within this framework the baryon formation is expected and is found to be enhanced by a by a revisited color reconnection um, topology in which in particular the baryons are uh, enhanced by these so-called junction topologies um, then there are also models that uh, um, um, have a, a, another approach like a, statist a statistical one uh, that are represented in this uh, in this plot by the green band, green band and uh, and the uh, uh, dark green um, line, which are respectively the statistical organization model plus relativistic work model and the core coalescence model. So the first one um, assumes that the organization is uh, is um, it takes place in a statistical way uh, governed by the by weights that are that are strictly related to the mass of the atoms that are produced. And on top of this, um, the, uh, a set of uh, uh, an enhanced set of higher mass excited charm hadron states are assumed according to the to the to what prescribed by the relativistic quark model, and the lambda c and the sigma c are uh, fed by the strong decays of this uh, of these additional states that have not been uh, measured yet by experiments. Um, and the, the, instead, the, the quark coalescence model assumes that the, 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 the quark charm can uh, recombine with, uh, with equal velocity light, uh, light quarks. Um, and uh, in, this, uh, in this framework, the, the adron abundances are again governed by, by uh, thermal weights. And uh, then we have other predictions from other models. And uh, here in, uh, in orange, in the, in the orange band, you see the predictions from uh, the Catania model in which uh, the, uh, the formation of a hot QCD matter at finite temperature is assumed already in, uh, in proton-proton collisions. And uh, in this framework, the, the charm quark can, can um, uh, adronize uh, in, a, a, in a mixed way uh, via fragmentation and uh, coalescence. Now, all of these, uh, these um, uh, models are uh, somehow in agreement within uncertainties with our with other with our measurement and uh, another piece uh, of information that we add is the the first measurement of the lambda c fraction uh, um, in proton proton collision effect in tv coming from the decay of sigma of sigma c states and uh, the result is reported in the right plot and as you can see the experimental measurement looks uh, a factor two higher about uh, more or less a factor two higher to what uh, is, uh, is expected in the plus and minus collisions. Uh, we, we are talking about a 38% of lambda C seems to come from decays of sigma C uh, addons. Uh, now, an important remark is that uh, in all these models that I described in the, last, uh, in the last slide, do not include any penalty factor for the formation of sigma C. So we don't have any, any penalty like that uh, we saw uh, related to the die quark structure um, as in the, in the conventional fragmentation. So at this point, can we say that conventional fragmentation in proton-proton collision at the TV scale is fully overcome by, the, by new adronization processes? So uh, according to this comparison, we, we may say yes. However, if we go on, uh, we see that uh, instead we are still uh, uh, far from understanding what is going on. Uh, I, I will not spend too much time here because uh, in the talk of Andrea Rossi, you will have uh, much more details, but uh, just to anticipate, you can see that if we look now at the Xi C over the zero ratio, we see that uh, all the models that were nicely reproducing within uncertainties, the sigma C measurement before, now they are not able to catch uh, the magnitude of the ratio, only the Catania model uh, gets closer. Uh, now, I, this brings me just to my conclusion. So. Uh, uh, in, as I said in the introduction, the standard picture from, uh, for the heavy flavor adron production in proton-proton collisions is based, on, is based on a factorization approach, and uh, in particular, it assumes universal fragmentation fra uh, functions. But uh, recent measurements um, from the LAC experiment uh, are showing that this assumption is uh, no more valid in a droning collision at the LAC. And to finally understand what is going on, of course, we need uh, a joint effort between uh, theory and experiment. And from an experimental point of view, we hope to have, um, to have more uh, uh, new, new uh, data in the, in, the, uh, in the next future. Uh, Run3 is, uh, is going to start in 2022. And uh, 
from uh, the, for the Alex experiment, we expect a larger statistics and uh, an upgraded detector. So in particular, uh, here, just a sketch for the upgrade of the, of the IPS uh, uh, detector, which will provide us better resolution for the reconstruction of second vertices for, um, uh, for, for charm hadrons. That's the end. Thanks a lot for your attention. Okay, thanks, uh, Mattia, for, uh, for uh, staying perfectly in time. Um, so do we have questions, uh, let's say, uh, on Zoom? Can you still hear us? Uh, do you have questions for Mattia? Okay, for, okay, one question at a time. Can you still hear us? Okay, okay, good. Okay, so if no question written on the chat. Anybody? Any question in the room, Giuseppe? Yeah, I wonder whether uh, there is a plan to measure, I have two questions. Uh, see, this is a function of multiplicity in PP with existing data or maybe around three and uh, uh, sigma plus, which I means with pi zero. I don't know if a conversion or in, I don't know in which way. Okay, um, so the, actually we, uh, as Alice's experiment, we have a measurement of lambda c over d0 as a function of e proton proton collision as a function of multiplicity. The, the, the analysis is, uh, uh, is well advanced. And uh, if I'm not wrong, Andrea will also talk uh, a bit about this uh, in his talk. And um, um, so the, the answer is yes, there is a, um, a measurement of this. And uh, indeed, uh, for the for the second question, indeed, we with this technique we can we can reconstruct all the uh, sigma c zero and plus plus for charge uh, conservation. And indeed, the sigma c the sigma c plus uh, is uh, in Alice uh, is more difficult for several reasons uh, due, due to the fact that we have a, a pi zero and then we need uh, to reconstruct the photons. And uh, to do this precisely, we, we need the calorimeters that, however, uh, re, uh, due to the limited acceptance in our, in our uh, um, apparatus, make everything a little bit, uh, a little bit more difficult. But uh, yeah, in principle, there is the possibility and this can be tried. Um, yeah, uh, let's see also with the, with, the, with the new data where more statistics will be available if this uh, uh, measurement is uh, precise enough also for this state. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Uh, I have a question for you. So the, you showed the cascade C um, in uh, in proton proton as yes. here. Okay. And uh, uh, I was wondering if you had these also in proton lead and or, or lead lead or any of these measurements. In fact, uh, what is maybe? Uh, oh, excuse me. So uh, the, at the moment, we only have in proton-proton collisions. So we don't have uh, already published results in other collision systems. Um, uh, what, we, what is stopping you? Is that like uh, just, 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 just uh, manpower or? Is there no, no, the, the, there are uh, analysis ongoing, but the, the, at the moment there are, they, are not, uh, they are not advanced yet. I mean, we don't have any, any preliminary uh, or for other collision systems. For the lead lead, we expect to have a um, possibility to precisely measure this uh, thanks to the, to the larger statistics and upgraded the ITS detector. But uh, for the moment, we do not have uh, anything in them. And, uh, and in any case, so if you do it as a functional multiplicity, as uh, Giuseppe was saying, um, what would you use as a, as a multiplicity variable? Like number of trucks, number of trucks. Yes, yeah. we uh, well in Alice we use uh, we have two. Uh, usually we use two different estimators for the for the multiplicity, and one of them is the the V zero multiplicity, the multiplicity recording in the scintillators at uh, um, a large rapidities that I also use for uh, for minimum bias trigger. The the multiplicity there, uh, in the amplitude of the of the signal in that detector is used as a multiplicity estimator, which is also as also a rapidity gap with respect to the area in which we perform the measurement at mean rapidity. So yes, this is also something else that is in work in progress, but I don't have anything to show to you today because uh, we do not have the final results yet. But uh, it's, 
it's, it's in progress, uh, all these uh, kind of measurements. Okay. Okay, thank you.